God bless you. Thank you, sir. It's not easy to ask questions. You should clap for him. Oh. Praise God. Brendo, bro. Brendo. Yes. Um, my question is to mommy. Uh -huh. um, mommy, um, as young upcoming believers that are passionate and desiring to see people established and built up in the faith. Now, um, when we start probably reaching out to certain sisters, and daddy was making mention of brothers trying to um, manipulate sisters. Um, I have a feeling that sisters also know how to manipulate brothers with their weaknesses. So my question is, if I, I for, for example, win a so, which is a lady, and I'm following her up, and um, most of the times we are trying to be as puritans as we can, trying to stop late night calls and all that, but this person keeps trying to become emotional and trying to say this certain kinds of time is when she needs certain kinds of counsel and also places where follow up and all those kind of things and trying to use emotion to blackmail a person. Mommy, what should a young believer that really wants to know Jesus and love Jesus do? Okay. Um, I wouldn't say that um, you should totally cut the sister. Okay. Sorry, ma. the okay. pillar is blocking me. Pillar is hiding my so, sorry. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't say that you should totally cut the sister off because I feel some sisters do these things not out of um, the wickedness of their hearts but because um, of their level of understanding. Now, if you as the brother, you are more mature and you will have a better understanding, you will have to deliberately, you know, build a boundary between you and the sister. Because I don't want to just um, conclude and say that the sister is me or she's, she's, out, she's just out to destroy you. I know that sisters can be many things. Like they can do all sorts of things. Do you understand? So you can build a boundary. You know that this is what the sister wants. As a spiritual brother, don't play along. She's calling you with that bedroom voice at 9 p.m., 9.30, 10 p.m., 11, and she wants to ask a question. The whole world will not come uh, crashing down if you do not answer that question that night. Why do you have to respond? You two, you have a problem. <laughs> you, have a, you two, you, you are looking for something. It's yes. like two of you, you are playing along. So if truly the brother does not want anything, there's something the sister is saying to the brother that the brother still likes, is, is enjoying it. So, but if you are not enjoying it, you will not say, the, the, you know, there are ways to do things. Do you understand? So, you will cut it. You, will, you, you, you don't pick calls at that time. You know, she's demanding for what you know you cannot give. And you are making excuses for her. It is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. A real man is supposed to be sensitive spiritually. When a girl is flirting around you, as a man who is sensitive, not just spiritually sensitive, you are wise, you have sense you will know that this person is flirting around you and you know how to do you understand that signal yes. uh -huh. now so <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah amen praise the lord praise the lord i think we need to take one question from uh, from telegram so the question says my question is as a man who has the responsibility of protecting and defending your house or family in bracket siblings included how do you stand up continually and defend them when they continually hurt you and downplay your efforts towards showing up for them meanwhile you genuinely desire to see your family members live in harmony but it's not really working because of the above mentioned issue yeah those are some of the abuses that men suffer um, it's very easy to take advantage of men, especially when the man is a real man, right? A real man will make sacrifices, he will go out of his way. And the consequence of that is that you can be abused, you can be taken advantage of. But because you are a real man, the, the solution is to determine that your reward, you are not seeking reward from the people, you are seeking reward from the Lord. Right? So even in dealing with your wife, 
your reward, you should not be expecting reward from your wife. Reward will come because what you sow is what you reap. But if it doesn't come, it should not affect your performance. So you continue to do the right thing. You stand for your family. You stand for your siblings. Um, if um, doing it outwardly is not yielding results, then you do it spiritually, in prayers, in sacrifice, and keep talking to the Lord to involve himself in your family. God will reward you at the end. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'll take another one quickly from Telegram. It says, can Christians confess their love to each other um, like telling their partner, I love you, or how handsome or how beautiful they are? The, the partner part is what about? Um. <laughs> they will say I'm too hard. But you see, Christians can confess their love one for another. Like I was going to tell Vincent, Vincent, there's something on your voice. Eh? And uh, me and mommy were talking about you in the car. You're an anointed man. You will not believe what I'm saying now, but you will see it in a few, few, few months, few years. It will show. So you can confess your love one for another. I can tell my brother that I love you. But when it's now an exchange between opposite sexes, there is no meter to measure whether your feelings are getting involved. Can you say it without your feelings? Yes. But can you also say it with your feelings? Yes. So how will we know when you are saying it without your heart being involved and you communicating? And in these matters, it's yourself that you know. You understand? It's yourself that you know. Paul said something that I love. And I think it's the message translation or his English standard version. He says, if eating meat will cause my brother to sin, I would rather be a vegetarian. All right? So... Um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So, between same sex, it's no problem. But when you are going to say that thing to a sister, I, I, imagine me now as pastor. One of my daughters here comes and says it's her birthday, and I say, Wow, you know, I love you so much, eh? Le mono mokobo. There'll be a problem. She won't sleep that night. She will be, it will be. It will be echoing in her brain consistently, consistently. She will no longer be hearing what I said. Other things will start coming up in her head. So it's just for safety. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's for safety. Right? So be careful with the words that you use. You are a blessing. Good. Um, I pray that the Lord continues to, to ex enlarge your coast. But when you start touching sensitive areas, like any time I think about you, I just know that God, uh, or God, stop, stop, stop. All right. So just expressing love between same sexes is good, but I don't think we should take it. We should stretch it. Okay, sir. Um, okay, let's take. Please, sir. Bishop. After we take here, let's move to YouTube. I'm seeing a lot of questions. Okay, sir. Praise the Lord. Um, I have two questions. I have two questions. Okay. One of it is. Is it wrong for a girl or a woman to say, based on she received the revelation that you are going to be a husband, and she tells you first? Okay. That's one. Then the second question is, what do you do when, um, let's say, in marriage, you know, some traditions, some belief systems, you know, from culture and all those things, they, they now, it now looks like you are not compatible. And it also looks like you feel you are led to that direction. Let's say this tribe and this tribe. Or let's say your family is even against your marriage to another tribe, and then you are not against it. And you feel like you, you will eventually not get married to your tribe, and it's going to cause a problem. So what do you do in this two? Well, uh, the first one is, uh, Fedora, can I sit here? Are you seeing me? Good. The first one is, I've done a teaching on this before. 
I can't remember the title. Who remembers the title? I did a, a full teaching on if a sister can propose first. And I used Ruth. Ruth chapter 3 clearly tells us that it was Ruth that proposed to Boaz. Yes, by order, by order, uh, not propose. Let me not use the word propose. A sister can receive first. But a brother is the one that will always propose. That's the order. A sister can receive first. So don't hear what I did not say. A sister can receive first. There's nothing wrong with her receiving first. But she should wait for the brother to propose. Because it is he that findeth a wife. Not she that findeth. So she can receive. There's nothing wrong with her receiving from the Lord. I'm going to tell her pastor, I've received that this brother is my husband. But proper order requires that the brother should be the one to do the honors. But if it's looking like, because there are some brothers that um, they are in certain areas in their life where they, they will never receive from God. They are not even thinking about marriage. Those brothers can be helped by getting somebody involved, a spiritual leader, who will be able to call the brother's attention and then lead him to pray, and those matters can be resolved. On the matters of traditional issues, it depends on what you heard from the Lord. If the Lord says, this person is your wife and she's full honey, and you are a robo, you do what the Lord says. There's no going back. You do what the Lord says. If your families are saying, over my dead body, you will not marry, there are two options. You keep praying, waiting for them to come around, or you go to the Lord, and if the Lord says, go ahead, you go ahead. I know a friend, we met at youth service, the girl's parents did not attend the wedding. Because they said she must not marry a man from River State. So the father did not come, the mother did not come. But two of them, the girl said, I'm ready to marry. I know you are the will of God for me. If my father and mother will not come, so be it. And their pastor was willing to do the wedding. Did the wedding. They have two, a bit three children today. The parents have come around eventually. So if you know it's the will of God, just follow the leadings of the Lord. That's it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, one from YouTube says, um, what can you do to bring your parents back together aside prayer? My mom has said she did not marry for love, but I don't want her to die before experiencing a happy marriage. Wow. Now, this is why the context in which we are having these conversations is that we are Christians. Brethren, don't marry an unbeliever. I beg you in the name of God, don't, whether you are male or female, don't be unequally yoked with a non-believer. That's one. Two, most of our parents of those days did not marry for love. Many of them, um, families came together and said, marry. Many of our old parents. And there are many things that happened in those marriages that were good and there are some that were bad. Some women stayed in marriages and they just endured the marriage until they died. But some had ended up having wonderful marriages. For this person now, uh, if, your, if your father and mother's marriages are already breaking, apart from prayer, you can begin to try to inter, be an intermediary, talk to father, talk to mother, try and see how the marriage can be restored. But ultimately, except God intervenes, there's not much you can do. Matters between a man and a woman are deeper than you can imagine. Except God intervenes, there's not much you can do. Yes. Okay. There's a question here that I feel will help people. I'm seeing it online. The sister is asking, she says, um, as a sister, how can I tell that I am too spiritual, which can be chasing men away. <laughs> so I want two, three brothers from the congregation. Joshua, you can pick any three brothers. Okay, sir. And <laughs> let them tell us how a sister can be too spiritual that will be a turn off for a brother. Okay, sir. Brother Mavis, brother of your Togo, 
Uh, Otogo is married. Let's use a okay, single, single brother. Single brothers. Mavis yeah. is a correct pick. Mavis is due for marriage. Yes, brother Mavis, brother Cleric. Cleric, yes. Um, and then um, brother Anowa. Yes. Yes, please come out. Please, we don't have time. Let's hurry up. <laughs> we don't have time, please. Please go. I stand. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Basically. <laughs> Sorry. So let me take question. Question again. again. It's like you didn't hear it. But let me it as, as a sister, how can I tell that I am too spiritual, which can be chasing men away? Brothers, chasing brothers away. Yes. Okay, I feel that. First of all, you don't think that you are too spiritual. Um, I don't believe that that measurement by yourself. What needs to be in check is character, not the disposition, how you handle the brother. Not, not that you are too spiritual. I don't agree with that term. So, uh, be good in character. That's what matters for me. Okay, please, please, please. Where is God? So, um, they sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man of God. <laughs> so sometimes they interchange and being too spiritual for lack of, you know, looking good and having bad character. I believe if it starts looking good, like taking care of us, so even if you, even if you are not having money to do your hair, at least keep it neat. Just looking good. I believe that you will not chase brothers away, being too spiritual. So. So many, many, many at times they interchange being too spiritual for you know not not um, being not looking good, not keeping up with yourself. So I don't think being too spiritual has anything to do in this matter. Praise God. We are looking for spiritual. <laughs> and just to add to what my brother said. No, no, sir. Give us an answer to the question. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to add to what they have said. You know, another area could be that maybe you feel like you are very prayerful. Uh, maybe you are um, always engaging in spiritual exercises. So you just think that when some brother look at you, if I manage, like I have one roommate that you see like that, that one of those sisters maybe say, and then they pray, they pray, they pray, they pray. She will not even be romantic and all of that, you know, things like that. So what I will say is um, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to balance yourself as a sister. And sometimes you need to learn how, um, I met my mother that used to say that you don't need, even that day I said it, that you don't need somebody to teach you some, some dynamics when it comes to that aspect. That the, even the Holy Spirit also teaches you how to be romantic. So I believe that um, if you follow the Holy Spirit and you are disciplined, it will also teach you how to be, how to balance both your spiritual life and your, your social life and how to relate with brothers in such a way that whenever a brother calls you, you are not just saying, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So what, what our brothers are saying is, spirituality should not be a turn off it should be an attraction so in summary don't use spirituality to cover character flaws don't use spirituality to to cover the fact that you're not combing your hair don't use spirituality to cover the fact that um, when you eat a goosey soup you don't like to brush all right so they are saying that if you are spiritual spirituality is supposed to be attractive so if your spirituality is turning people off, there is a need for a personal audit. If you are genuinely spiritual, the Holy Spirit will teach you the other aspects and you will be very attractive. There's a question mommy highlighted. Let's take it before we go. We come back to the house. This ones in your hand are from the house, Abby. Yes, sir. And let's take one more online. Where's that question? 
He says, from a single brother to mommy. Uh -huh, yes. How do we help That's sisters awesome. that we see their vulnerability, mm. but they don't want to be helped? They believe that if they stay and persevere, we will yield. Okay, my answer to that brother is, there's something called tough love. If you truly love the sister and you, you care about what happens to the sister, you will apply tough love. You will not continue to behave or make her feel like somehow something will happen. Like I always say, brothers sometimes know how to play along. A sister is coming around you with the hope that something somehow will happen. Maybe in another one year, they are hoping, they are waiting. You will be the one to be able to tell the sister. A time will come where you have to draw the line and tell the sister outrightly. Nothing can happen between us. Sometimes when you keep your mouth closed, you give room for many kinds of assumption. Silence means consent. If you are not saying anything, you are there, you are caring for the sister, you are doing everything and everything and everything, and you are not saying anything. You have not said yes, you have not said no. You are just moving and continuing like that. The sister will keep feeling and hoping that somehow something will happen. Only for her to see one day that the next month, your wedding card is coming out. Just be ready to carry dead bodies. <laughs> so, there's a point when you have seen that kind of sister, to help her, you have to be tough and let her know outrightly. If you tell a sister, as I'm seeing you like this, you are a good person. But you are not the one I can marry. You are not the one I want to marry. If you have said to a sister outrightly and straight, I don't think that sister will still be coming around you or be hoping because you have said it clearly and plainly. Don't say it in coded language. Please say it clear. Be straight and be clear. No sister is dumb that you will say it and they will still be feeling and be waiting. But if you are saying it in coded language, you say, I've, I've used actions to tell her that I don't want. Now lie. Say it clearly. Say it straight. Be straight with your answer. Let her know straight. And be nice also. Don't go and be saying it and making her feel like uh, uh, something is wrong with her. And reduce her completely. You can be nice. You can, say, you, can, you can make a point and you can still say it nicely. Thank you. So there are quite a number of questions that are related. Or in the course of um, our pastors answering the questions, let your spirit be open because answers may come from there but i may not ask exactly what you have written but answers may come from there because you know the questions are quite um they are normal so this one says is it true that a single mother cannot raise a real man that a man needs a man to raise a real man um a single mother can raise a real man if she's um, really committed to the discipline of raising the real man I'm a product of a single mother but the way God designed it is um, a man needs a man to mentor him boys need men to mentor them so when you read scriptures you see that the father is speaking to his son my son do this my son do that my son do that it's important so even though a single mother is going to raise her child it's good that in raising the the, the, the boy into a man she brings him around uh, men that can help to shape or mold the character i've spoken about this before because Men and women are different in discipline, in how they love, in how they raise their children. It's different. So a, a, a boy needs to experience proper uh, mentorship from another man so that he can grow um, in the right order. So it's not like, I, I will not blanket it and say that a woman cannot raise a real man. I'll say a woman can, but her efforts will produce greater results if she's able to bring godly men around the circle that can also contribute to raising the male child. 
That's where I'm going. So this is to mommy. What if my prayer time is 1 a.m. and a brother is my prayer partner? And we have to make prayer calls at 1 a.m. due to difference in hostels. A lot of us. Mommy, how can this be seen in the Christian light? Although we have pure intention. I, I want to be sure I, I got the questions correctly. Uh, and the brother says that the prayer time has to be on call by 1 a.m. because of the difference in your hostel. Okay. Uh, how can you, you have good intentions. <laughs> I can only pray that that's good intentions. Okay, let me just say, it depends on the maturity level of both of them. Do you understand? It's, it's, it's not, those kind of situations will not be for uh, spiritual babes. You have not been able to find your feet very well as a, as a Christian sister or as a Christian brother. And then you not decided that out of the multiples of brothers and sisters everywhere, you chose a brother to be your prayer partner, which is not supposed to be wrong, but you not decide that is a brother that is supposed to, that is a brother that is going to be your prayer partner, and then if you know you are not strong enough, I don't think I don't I do not advise that. I do not counsel that a brother becomes your prayer partner because emotions can crawl in at the end of the day. So you need to be very very careful. You need to be sure of your standing and your state before you begin to choose brother. I'm not, a, I'm not an advocate of a sister picking a brother as, as a prayer partner. There are many good sisters and there are many good brothers that you can pick as prayer partners. Do you understand? I'm not a feminist, but I do not believe in it. Thank you. So this is directed to Pastor Ogogo. As a man, how do I deal with a rigid woman in courtship or marriage? As a man, how do I deal with a rigid woman in courtship or marriage? Um, how do you deal with a rigid woman? This one is very strong. <laughs> well, um, first of all, I would like to say that relationships are for mature believers. Relationships are for mature believers. That means that to an extent you must have been on a journey of character development um, before you begin to talk about relationships. And um, when, and also, we are talking about a relationship, I expect that it's a relationship that leads to marriage that we are talking about courtship. So in that kind of relationship, uh, people tend to be themselves you know, unlike normal friendship, there are parts of themselves that will be exposed. And many times people run away when they begin to see the reality. And since we are in a Christian setting, you know, I want to believe or assume that whoever is in a relationship with the star is rigid, head God, and say this is the person. So if we have that as a given, that the both of them believe that this is the will of God for them to marry, and they now be, begin to see that, okay, one person is rigid, it can be both ways, either the brother can be rigid, or the sister can be rigid. Then you begin to ask yourself, first of all, can I cope with this thing for my for the rest of my life? Praise the Lord. Then, if you begin to ask yourself that question, the next thing you begin to think of, okay, Lord, how do I handle this thing? How do I handle this person? And one of the first things you can do is to make up your mind that you are going to love unconditionally. And the way the word loves is that you have to change first. You know, but the believer loves the way is expected to love the way Christ loves. So Christ did not wait for us to change before he came down to die for us. So you now discover the sacrificial aspect of love. That even though this person is not the way I like things to a, a, a person to behave. But this is how this person is now. So are you willing to love long enough until God works on that person and hope that, okay, we are in this journey together, God has brought us together, but you have these issues, 
and there are serious issues, but I believe that God brought us together. So what you do in that situation is that you make up your mind to love unconditionally. If you discover that you are struggling to love, then you ask God for grace to love. Praise the Lord. To love yeah. the person unconditionally then, you also have to pray for the person. That's the third part. And the, same thing, the final part is to speak the truth to the person in love. Right? But as you are speaking to the person in love, you are not expecting immediate changes. You are speaking the truth in love just so that the person will know, okay, these issues you are having is not, no, I'm not happy with it. But it won't make me leave you. Or it won't make me cut off from you. I still love you just the way God loves you. And I believe you are on a process, you are, you are on a journey. And I believe with time, as you yield to God, you will grow. So you are doing those three things. You are loving the person unconditionally. Then you are asking God also for grace to do that love, to love that person unconditionally because it will be very sad. It will be something that you have to deny yourself to do. Just like we learned yesterday in service about denying ourselves. We don't only really do that in our relationship with God. We also do that even in the marriage context. You know, denying yourself. There's a cross that you have to carry. I've said to some people before that there's a cross. Even in marriage, there's a cross you have to carry. Praise the Lord. So many times yeah. people shy away from that aspect. They just want the love of ice cream and hamburger, and that's the kind of love that is in their mind. But it's the kind of love that you you will cry tears of pain, but because you love the person, you will still with the person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I'm looking at time, and this is why we have the Wednesday meeting. Pastor the question. Um, so, questions that are still pending will be attended to on Wednesday. Um, someone was asking, and it's painful that we're off air, so she's not going to get this answer. Um, that can I put my ex once in a while when I'm feeling bad so that they can comfort me? We're not doing everything. <laughs> they are not doing anything, but they just feel bad. They need somebody to comfort them. Please don't go to your ex. That is like taking chicken to the to whose house? To the slaughterhouse. All right. So if your question has not been answered, it will be answered on Wednesday. I'm feeling we have Pastor Effie and his wife here, so we are going to have Q and A for a long time, long time. So don't be discouraged. God bless. You.